Christopher Cotton makes the grade. I'd like you to change my grade to an A, please. And I'd like to be one of them millionaire mystery writers, Mr. Dowdy said, as he went right on grading papers at his desk. He did not look up. He didn't need to. He knew the voice well enough. It was Christopher Cotton, quarterback star of Riverside High's football team, the object of every girl in class's affection, and the very bane of Richard Dowdy's existence. I asked nicely, Christopher said. I'll ask again. I'd like you to change my grade to an A, please. And why would I do that? He raced through the papers, marking the pages with long strokes of red felt pen, the grades nearly illegible. He had given this same test to six classes a day for the last four years. By the time the second year had rolled around, he had the multiple-choice answers nearly memorized. Every other teacher does it. Why shouldn't you? At last, Dick Dowdy lowered his spectacles and looked up at the boy. Christopher Cotton was the boy who got away with everything. Teachers changed his grades at the urging of the superintendent, who knew Christopher was destined for athletic greatness and would see the school through the state championship by his senior year. In his freshman year, Christopher had beaten a boy so badly he'd broken his nose. And while this was an act most students would have been suspended for, Christopher was only given two days' detention on the condition that he apologized to poor, battered, and bruised Michael Bartlett. In his sophomore year, a girl had accused him of getting her drunk on a date and seducing her into giving up her virginity. There had been a great deal of debate as to whether or not the girl had consented, and it was only a matter of weeks before Christopher's father, a hotshot lawyer, and his mother, who was not the head of the PTA, but an ever-important bringer of brownies, nonetheless, had met with the girl's parents at their home to do damage control. After that brief rendezvous, the girl retracted all previous statements, and the case against Christopher was dropped. In fact, she had since been seen on more than one occasion holding his hand under the bleachers. Whatever difficulties befell the golden boy were somehow always made to disappear. "'Young man, I am not every teacher,' Mr. Dowdy said, removing the glasses altogether to imply the seriousness of his tone. Now, if I am correct, you received... He searched his spiral-bound grade book, placing his finger upon the first column, and ran it down to Christopher's name. Ah, yes, just as I thought. An F. He emphasized the sound of the letter, drawing it out as he looked up at the golden boy with the golden hair. F. He was happy to give Christopher Cotton an F. He was goddamned elated. On the very few occasions you have deigned to grace us with your presence, you have passed notes, cheated off others, and made lurid gesture each time I turn to write on the blackboard, something that never fails, apparently, to liven the room with uproarious laughter. You have thrown spitwads on boys smaller than you, you have pretended to accidentally fall hands first onto the chests of girls larger than you. You have been unruly, you have been disrespectful, you have been a disruption to others, and you have been an overall pain in my ass. An F, young Sir Cotton, is what you have gotten, and an F is what it shall stay. Dowdy grabbed his spectacles and placed them back upon his ears, returning to grade his papers. Christopher pulled up a chair. He turned it backwards and sat crossing his arms against its back, staring at his Spanish teacher. You're going to change it, the boy smiled, his teeth nearly blinding in whiteness. If a professional football career didn't pan out as Dowdy suspected it would not, he thought the boy might make it as a model, if he didn't become an early father first. You're going to change it, and adios, Senor Cotton, 
the teacher replied with a slight wave of the hand. Christopher Cotton did not budge.